Good afternoon and welcome to Healthy Today, a weekly health education podcast brought to you by Health Innovate Plus, a social enterprise providing telehealth care, health education, and humanitarian services, and powered by Ivy Kane, the Early Years Point, your child education partner. I'm your host, Dr. Emeka Kanebi, a medical doctor and public health practitioner. Just to thank our listeners for joining in two weeks ago before our Easter celebrations. <laughs> you are valued. You are truly valued. And we talked about a variant, still normal, a variant still normal. We discussed the autism spectrum of disorders and educated us on the importance of reporting any developmental delays we see in any child so they can get the care, support, and love to live a wholesome life, and of course, we vibe. It's a good music. And if you're enjoying the music in the background, this is Welcome Home by Osibisa. <laughs> if you missed this and other episodes, not to worry. You can catch them now on Spotify, Amazon Music, and Google Podcast. Just download the app and search Healthy Today, or better still, just use the link on our Instagram bio. Please follow us on Instagram at Health Innovate Plus so you don't want to miss our weekly giveaways from our Healthy Today Pop Quiz brought to you by Ivy Kane. Awesome. It's episode six on the first season on Healthy Today, and we will be talking about sugar breath. <laughs> sugar breath. So let's jump in. I'm sure my listeners, as usual, would wonder what we have to discuss on the show today, but not to worry, it will be demystified in a little while. So how the breath of a human being smells could lead us to making a diagnosis of a disease or condition in the body, okay? The breath could be metallic in gum disease, acidic or sour like in gastric reflux disease or ulcers. It could be moldy or musty like in liver disease, fishy, like in the end stages of kidney disease and several other smells, all right? But today we discuss sugar breath or sweet or fruity breath. And this sometimes is the mouth odor you perceive in someone with unmanaged diabetes. Yes, today I talk about the big diabetes. <laughs> so who is ready for some illumination? Amazing. So what is diabetes? Simply put, it is too much sugar in the blood. Too much sugar in the blood. So how does my body manage sugar normally? So you know what normal is and then where the abnormal comes from. So when you eat anything at all, your body breaks down your food to its simplest form, okay? So it can be absorbed and that is usually sugar or glucose as we will call it which is actually the main source of fuel for the brain. Once the sugar gets into the blood, your blood sugar starts to rise. And once it gets to a certain level that your body has said that this is the maximum you can get to, signals are sent to the pancreas. Now, the pancreas is an organ located somewhere down deep in your tummy, just at the back there, to produce a special chemical called insulin, okay? This is a very special hormone and it's a lifesaver hormone. This insulin then acts on the cells in your body, particularly the muscles especially, and then the liver. And it tells these muscles and this liver to take the glucose from the blood and use it for energy production. And that's why you have all the strength that you have. And if not required, if that energy is not required at the time, what it does is that it stores that energy in a form that it can use later. And then it can be broken down again when you, your cells need that sugar, okay? This is the balance. This is the balance. But what then leads to diabetes? So diabetes has been called a group of diseases um, that really happens when this balance I described has been disturbed. So it's either the pancreas, remember that organ I told you that's deep down at the back of your belly? Remember that when that organ, the pancreas, stops producing enough insulin 
or even if enough insulin is produced, so now it's not about the amount of insulin, but even if the amount is sufficient, and the cells like that, the liver, the, the, the muscles, they do not respond, they do not work with insulin. All that sugar remains in your blood, all in your blood. So that's the thing. So too much sugar in your blood, that's the problem, okay? And that can damage the blood vessels. It's not good for your blood vessels. And guess what? There are blood vessels all over your body. So if it damages the blood vessels in your brain, you could have a stroke. If it damages the blood vessels in your eyes, you can have an eye, an eye defect, like the eye, the, the, um, um, the retinopathy. So that's a damage to the, a part of the eyes. If it affects the kidneys, the blood vessels in the kidneys, you can have kidney disease. And many other conditions, wherever you have blood vessels, your skin, your, your feet, that's why you have some people with what we call diabetic ulcers. And so it just damages the, the blood circulation to your extremities. And then you have people who are amputated because of those unhealing ulcers. Hmm. Also, since there is no available sugar as well, you remember that there's sugar, but there's no sugar. So since there's no available sugar to be used by the cells, the liver, the muscles, what happens is that your body believes there's no sugar. And so it starts to break down fat in the muscles and other places to use it for energy. And then, But the problem with this is that, yes, in a short time, you have that energy, but this once this... Once these chemicals that are produced begin to build up from that breakdown of fat, that's the problem. These chemicals are called ketones. The excess of these ketones would usually present as a sweet, fruity, smelling breath. Sugar breath. Hmm. And usually this is indicative of a diabetic emergency called diabetic ketoacidosis, which can lead to a coma. And even death. Hmm. So how can I tell that I have diabetes? Hmm. The scary thing about diabetes is that in some cases, there may be no symptoms at all. And the first symptom might just be an emergency. However, the classical and well-established symptoms of diabetes stem from what is happening to the sugar in your blood. One of which is excessive hunger and increased eating. Okay? And we call that ex increased eating polyphagia. But, there, but because there's sugar, but there is no sugar. <laughs> and that can be, you, that, and there's no sugar that you can use by yourself. So your cells can't use the sugar. All right. This gave diabetes the popular expression called hunger in the midst of plenty. Because there is sugar in the blood, but just not sugar in the cells. Can you imagine that? What a frustration. Second is increased thirst. So the need to drink a lot of water. And we call that polydipsia. This is because the high concentration in your sugar, or a high concentration of sugar in your blood, this tells the brain, drink more water, tells you to drink more water to dilute the sugar. Now the problem is that the sugar in your blood, as it goes to be excreted from the kidneys, it takes with it water. And so you get dehydrated. And your body says, drink more water. And then you further dilute the amount of sugar in your blood. And then you don't have enough sugar again. And the cycle just continues. Just so frustrating. And you become dehydrated. Whew. Worse still, and this is also one of the biggest bummers, is that you have this frequency in urination. So as you're taking a lot of water, as the sugar is going through your kidneys, it's pulling a lot of water, you tend to just pee a lot. And so some people would pee up to five times at night, will wake up up to five times, so it would disturb their sleep. This would lead to fatigue, just being not yourself. Oof. However, these are not the only symptoms. Can you imagine? But if you have any or worse, a combination of these symptoms, please report to your healthcare provider immediately. I know your next big question. So doctor, what causes diabetes? Now, the causes of diabetes are definitely not as straightforward as most of you might think, okay? So, such as eating too much sugar, like most of you would think. 
The causes are usually linked to the type of diabetes, okay? Yes, there are types. So I'll talk about pre-diabetes quickly. Here, the sugar levels are high, but not as high to get a diagnosis of diabetes. And here, this is my specialty. With the right strategies, you can prevent the development of chronic diabetes. I tell you, you can, you can, and I'll tell you a little about that. Then you have the popular type 1 and type 2 diabetes related to the genes, hereditary, a family history. So mommy has it, daddy has it, grandma has it, grandpapa has it, brother has it, sister has it. You're at risk of diabetes, you know. And then you have being overweight or obese or inactivity, all of this smoking. They're all risk factors for this kind of diabetes. And then you have gestational diabetes. And you, this usually comes about in some women when they're pregnant. And it has some very debilitating effect on the baby. The baby could be too big. And then, you know, it increases the risk of cesarean sections or the baby could have birth injuries when coming out through a vaginal delivery. And could even die a miscarriage. Hmm. And, and the good thing about this diabetes is that once the baby is out, then usually this kind of diabetes will be resolved. So some of you listening to me, if you're, if you're ever pregnant, you remember that your blood sugar is something that they will check at about the 20th week of your pregnancy. And that's just to make sure that you don't have sugar problems, you don't have diabetes, and if you do have it, it can be managed properly so you can have a healthy baby and a healthy mother. So what do I do? Remember, diabetes can be prevented, thank God. <laughs> Make healthier choices, eat right. More plants than animals, more plants than animals. And at Health Innovate Plus, we do, uh, we do prepare um, health plans, meal plans for you. And so you can always reach us at healthinnovateplus at gmail.com or you can just like um, our page and uh, follow our page on, um, on Instagram and then just send us a message and then we can make a meal plan for you, okay? Less carbs, more fruits and vegetables, increased physical activity, just increase your, just have good exercise and have routine medical checks, yes. And some of you on health insurance plans, this is inbuilt, utilize it, have your yearly plans and then they will always check your blood sugar, okay? If you suspect diabetes in you or someone around you, you should report to a health center immediately. Your healthcare provider would conduct a thorough assessment and also test your blood sugar before a diagnosis is made. If a diagnosis of diabetes is made, your treatment and management will depend on the type, okay? I advise that you follow your healthcare provider's medical orders to have the best quality of life. This would usually involve diet therapy, lifestyle changes, as well as some medications. Amazing. So remember, diabetes comes about due to excess sugar in your blood. A sweet or fruity breath could be indicative of a diabetic emergency, diabetic ketoacidosis. Remember I talked about that. And then uh, during our live show, somebody had asked if, how do you know if you have a, you know, if your breath smells sweet or fruity um, or sugar breath, as we called it on the show. And I described to them that you could actually, just the same way you can pick a bad breath from somebody who is at close proximity to you, you could actually just smell it. You know, it's to be sweet. It'll smell like fruits. It'll smell like sugar. You know how sugar smells. It smells that way. And then you could just, you know, if it's a friend, you could say, oh, your friend smells sweet. And have you, and you could ask about some of the symptoms we talked about today. You could lead them to have a blood sugar test. And if it's for you, you could just place your, the palm of your hand in front of your face and you can blow into it. And hopefully there is that back into your nose. There's some smell back into your nose and you can smell. If it smells fruity, then you should just, you know, have a sugar check. All right. Great. Thank you so much for asking that question on our live show. I know it helped somebody. There might be no symptoms of diabetes, so regular sugar checks at least once a year could have some value, so remember that. Where you experience any or a combination of symptoms, as we discussed, report to your healthcare provider for a proper assessment and management if diagnosed with diabetes, okay? So that's it on sugar breath, and I hope you had a great time. <laughs> so our medical word of the week is... Our medical word for the week is ketones, ketones, ketones. And that's spelled K-E-T-O-N-E-S, K-E-T-O-N-E-S. And ketones, like I said earlier, 
are chemicals the body produces when it breaks down fat for energy in the liver. When you don't have enough of the hormone insulin, remember the special hormone, the lifesaver in your body to turn sugar into energy. These ketones, when they build up in the blood, they become toxic and can lead to devastating consequences. All right? So let us vibe to ketones. Yes. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, <laughs> you're pushing <laughs> every day, people. The hustle is real. You're not playing with us. <laughs> yes, it's not happened yet. Don't be frustrated. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> he has your time. Come on. <laughs> You're not delayed, okay? Don't worry, we will vibe to that music later on the show. That is Aimasiko by Simi. Excellent, so you can enjoy that music. Great, so my doctor's orders, okay? My doctor's orders for the week. Diabetes may have no symptoms, so have regular blood sugar checks at least once a year to pick it up early. That's my doctor's orders. Let me say a quick prayer for you. Dear Lord, thank you for everyone listening to this podcast. And thank you for life and health. We pray that you give us strength to eat right and be physically active. And even when we fail, grant us grace to deal with challenges that come with managing difficult health conditions until our healing comes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amazing! We have come to the end of this episode and I hope it has been educative and fun for you. Remember to follow us on Instagram at Health Innovate Plus and send us a message if you have any questions for me. Catch and share this and previous episodes on Spotify, Amazon Music, and Google Podcasts. Remember, you can win amazing giveaways on our Instagram page. <laughs> on our Healthy Today pop quiz, we will post our pop quiz later this week. So follow us, okay? Make sure you follow us. And our first correct responder gets a giveaway from Ivy Kane. <laughs> so see you same time next week. Thank you for joining. And then let's vibe to I Masiko by Simi. <laughs> Oh, yes. Come on. Move from side to side. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Come on. Yes. Oh. Oh. No way. He has your time. He cares about you. <laughs> Come on. So thank you so much for being on the show today. I really, really do appreciate you. And remember, you're not delayed. God's time, always the best. Thank you for joining. And you know what? See you next week. <laughs>